Okay, so this is a scraper. We go also around those. I stand back uh, when I turn it on just to make sure. Good base of support to start with. Tool on the hip, finger in the guy, finger on top of the tool point. Okay. Right leg in the wind, and back in the wind. Try a different tool here. This one is known as a gouge, this, and this shape is is more of a roughing gouge. They come in a variety of sizes, so this was uh, is actually a medium size gouge. They'll come a lot uh, a lot bigger. Most of the time, the gouge is also known as a roughing gouge. And the roughing gouge is what you would use primarily if you were going to start, say, turning down a log that still has the bark on it and stuff like that. So for our purposes, um, you want to make sure that you're using, you're riding this bevel right here, and also make sure that these are, are nice and sharp, like I mentioned before. Okay, let's try this one. That there is a little bit different technique on using this and I'm, I'm riding it a little bit higher uh, up on the, uh, on the tool rest in order to get this tip to uh, really uh, take a little bit off at a time. You can uh, adjust it a little bit uh, in different areas to cut a little more on the sides but for our purposes we're just using it to just take it down a little bit. Okay, so we're going to move over to another tool, and I'm going to move back here. Again, spinning it by hand to make sure it's clear. Okay, this one is called a skew. There are a variety of... Um, different ways to get this lined up and some skews will have a little bit more of a bevel in here but this one's fairly straight when you're cutting with the where you are using the chisel you want to try to stay within the middle third of the chisel when you are using it now there's a couple ways to get it lined up and we use the chisel primarily for, uh, for uh, taking the real rough grains off and uh, getting it nice and smooth uh, before we sand. Okay, so I like to get the, make sure that the cutting edge of the chisel is parallel to the, to, to this edge and then I will turn it up and then turn it in so that I am only cutting within this middle third. And you can see that the size of the chips that are coming off with using especially the, uh, the bowl gouge, they're very small. You'll find that when I use the chis the uh, skew, there's going to be a lot less. The very, very fine chips should be coming off. Okay, so let's give this one a try. Parallel, up, and 
So you can see that the little bits that are coming off, they're very, very small, very fine. And what we're doing is we're going from this to this, nice and smooth, almost ready to, uh, to sand. Although on this part here, it's a little bit, it's not round yet. So, but this section here that we've got done, it's ready to, to apply the sandpaper to. Okay, that's the skew. This is known as the parting tool. Uh, this tool has, uh, like the tool suggests, parting as far as it, we could be cutting it off, parting it from the machine. And for the most part, you use this part facing uh, into your uh, your wood and it will just cut a groove in it and you'll cut through a certain distance almost all the way through then you can stop the lathe and use a, uh, a handsaw to cut the rest of it but this parting tool can also be used for doing decorations or different profiles on the uh, on your work product so I'll give you a quick demonstration of the parting part and then also uh, a quick demonstration on putting in some uh, some little valleys. Okay, let's try that again. Okay, so cutting in straight, this can give you, uh, and you just keep pushing it and working it, and then you'll end up being able to take your, uh, your handsaw and cut it off completely. And doing a few more of these types of things, you can get some nice little decorations happening on, on your product. Now I'm going to take this parting tool and turn it a different direction, and I'll turn it like this so that I'm cutting with the, the full face of it and you'll see what, what else you can do with it.
this is fairly rough because of the, uh, the, the way the chisel, and we're dealing with a very soft wood, but for the most part, we can still get in and do a lot of sanding in here, but I'm just giving you an idea that this is, uh, you can do this, use this for decoration as well as for doing a parting tool. Now I could also use this scraper to do a number of other um, uh, designs on, on here as well. just see that given whatever your imagination is and whatever you think that the wood will give you uh, will come up with all sorts of designs and that's the part and parcel that's really nice about uh, turning is that you can use your imagination your creativity and whatever you feel at the time you can put into your wood and what the wood will give you one of the things I didn't mention that you really want to try to stay away from are any uh, knots, uh, big knots, especially if they are loose. Although this one looks like it's a tight knot, but whenever you come around knots, it's harder. You have to be, uh, you have to go a little slower when you're uh, going through that. Okay, so that knot goes all the way through to here as well. But it's a solid knot. But still, you don't want to. You want to try to stay away from it as as much as possible. Uh, for our purposes uh, right now, we could take a, the skew and come in here and, and, uh, and clean this up and, you wanna do, uh, and or we can do some, uh, some sanding on it. So we can uh, show you a little bit of sanding. One of the safety tips when you're doing sanding is that you must make sure that your tool rest is completely out of the way of the area that you're sanding. You use the over and under, and I use the pads of my fingers on the back, uh, and whether I'm going to do it on the top or, or not as well, but I have my, my fingers over top here and under here, and you let the sandpaper do the work and also a little bit of pressure if it got caught because it's turning towards me down here, if I lose the paper, it's just going to go there. Or if it's going to come this way, then my hand will go there. So I won't get my hand anywhere near the, uh, uh, the product while, uh, while it's turning or while I'm sanding. So let's give you a quick idea of what it's like to sand. Okay. just a very very short time sanding and you can see how much it's taken this uh, area down quite nicely. If I want to get into an area like this I can just fold my sandpaper around a bit until it, it's going to fit in here and we can get into this this tight area here. So let's turn that and sand it. So 
let's sand it up really nice. If I want to get into some, uh, some tighter spots, I can fold it again and I can just run it in here like this and catch it. These little uh, tight rings here, we can't do, uh, we can't really get in and sand those, but a popular thing to do with those is you take a piece of uh, guitar string uh, with a couple of handles on it and you can put it in here and you actually burn in a really nice uh, dark design. But for our purposes right now, this is just uh, giving you a little idea of uh, doing the, each step and uh, with each of the, the four basic chisels that we have and a little bit of a sanding uh, uh, demo on uh, making sure your hands are in the right position and the tool rest is out of the way when you're sanding. One of the things I really want to emphasize is whenever you're going to check your work uh, after any, any turning at all, make sure that you shut the machine down first and do it. I'm sure if you go online you can look at YouTube videos and uh, you see uh, a lot of these um, very experienced turners. Uh, they leave the machine running and they're able to check whether it's square or not. Uh, they're able to check the depth of things using uh, outside calipers, etc. They'll put their hand on, the, uh, on it while it's rotating, but for our purposes uh, we want to make sure that this machine is completely stopped when you go to check each stage of, uh, of your uh, progress.